From One of One Production Studio, located in Fort Lee, New Jersey, this is the Art of Music Tech. And now, here's your host, Fela and Dennis. Yeah, good. But that was him really being like, watch out now, you might fuck it up again. <laughs> um, nice. funny, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, moving forward, I, I did. Me and Ross did fall out after that, and it was that was that was a special time because I had like gotten so I had seen I've been at the heights. I've been hanging out with Puffy and all these big people and doing all this stuff, mastering albums and working with me and Khaled. How to like got developed a special relationship with each other because Khaled was uh, Ross's A and R for Def Jam. Oh. He was the head of Def Jam South, so. I, I was getting mentored by Khaled. I was getting mentored by Ross. I was getting mentored by even a little bit by Diddy a little bit, you know, when he was around. So I was learning a lot. Um, but now all of a sudden me and Ross fell out. So now I'm not involved in this fast life anymore. I'm back to kind of just doing around the way projects and stuff like that. And to the point where I got jaded and I didn't want to do it. I didn't even, I was, I, had, I was so used to working on that such big a level where if we just recorded a freestyle in like, you know, put on the internet, it would have millions of views within, you know, minutes, you know what I mean? So um, now here I am and I'm like working on stuff like, hey, what are you working on now? And I was like, oh, uh, you know, Joe blowing the around the way boys. You know, like, <laughs> you know nobody, nobody cares. Who's these guys? So yeah. I was pretty dated, man. And and um, I, I only bring that up. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I consider Ross a brother and uh, just like everybody you knows, families fight. Yeah. Um, and I think we just, it, it, the, what people don't understand, and I think they do, but they just on the theoretical version uh, is uh, working on all, any of these projects. You know, you guys doing live sound, you know, these are very heated and, 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 and hectic and intense moments. And it's sometimes um, chaotic. Yeah. Super chaotic, always. <laughs> um, and um, yeah. you know, in the live sense, you know, you got the show where with, with an album, this is months of that yeah. same intensity and would you know did you get it right today and, and is this right and hey i told you to lift this up did you add the sound did you and um you know so when you're doing these projects you damn near fall out with everybody at least once you know where everybody you know we're cursing at everybody i'm cursing at producers i'm cursing at other engineers ross is cursing me out i'm cursing out somebody else because i don't want ross to curse me out so i said hey ross i cursed him out already <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got a double back. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, we're, there's a lot of beats and and we're in close proximity all the time. So you know, you you tend to have your falling outs. So that was our first falling out, and um, it was another reminder, kind of going back to where I told you about the ghost face thing. That was my first real like reality check of like, hey, you know, this shit is real fragile, and you know, and Damn. and you know, it, it, as much as you think you're the man this shit can always crumble under you, you know? So these are humbling moments, but also, you know, you know, now I can look back on it and say, Hey, I learned so much, but at the time it was, I mean, I, shit, it was rough. It was I, I went through some hard, hard times. And then also, cause at that time, you know, I had the biggest record in the country, all this shit, number one album, you know, and um, I was spending money like, like this shit was going to be like this forever, you know? And that was my first lesson in like, Hey man, shit, the rug could get pulled out from under you. So even though I was making a lot of good money, I was still technically living check to check, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. for conversation purposes, let's say I was making 10 grand a month and now all of a sudden, I'm, but I'm spending 9,500 of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 500 at the end of every month, you know, because I'm buying shoes, I'm buying bottles, I'm going out, I'm, I'm living that life. Oh, yeah. Easy like to do in, in, in Miami too. Don't get, like, that's like the flash capital and then just coming from no money and just having money now yeah. and then and then hanging out with a bunch of rich people you you tend to kind of want to keep up as uh -huh. far well, that's what i you know how i felt at the time yeah. oh they got the new jordans i need them too so i was like tapping into their plugs too you know what i mean yeah. like when the, when the shoe guy came i was like yo man bring my size too so yeah. i'm buying a pair it was just a lot and yeah. um I, it was a big learning experience i had to fall all the mm -hmm. way down and then kind of learn how to do that's when uh when i me and ross ended up uh getting back together but uh before that i went on the road with meek meek mill uh his first tour and that's kind of what brought me back i started getting uh that's when i decided i'm gonna start building a studio in my house um 
cut down cost and uh, incorporate myself, start mm-hmm. a business, uh, hire an accountant, <laughs> start being, uh, you know, financial. responsible. Yeah, responsible <laughs> and, and literate. And and because and, up until that point, I, I was technically, I, I still am an artist. We all are artists. You know, this is an art we do, mm-hmm. Whether, even though it's, it's a lot of uh, equipment and technical stuff. It's still an art to the craft of what we do. So I, I was full fledged artist though. I wasn't really minding my business. Kind of like the, the the same sad story we hear from a lot of early uh, artists back in the day, you know, guys that are legends that they money they just didn't handle their money. They they were all about the passion of the music. That's where I was at at the time. Mm-hmm. And when when that when we fell out, me and Ross fell out. Even though, you know, I would never ask for that situation. It was actually the lesson I needed because. Yeah. It, Cause no, even if, you know, a lot of the times people tell you, Hey, don't go down there, but you'll still go down because you don't know why they're not telling you to go down there. Yeah. So, you know, I needed that, that, re- that, that, that real, uh, real world, uh, experience to kind of really kick me in the ass and, uh, get my, my shit together business wise. So when I went on the road with Meek, I saved money. I started buying equipment in my house. I started recording and uh, engineering out of my house and mixing. Um, um, I run into Ross on the road with Meek in Houston and now we're, you know, you know, cause, cause at the end of the day we're buddies. So, you know, it's like nothing ever changed. It was like, Oh, you know, this is like a year and a half later. Hey, what's up, man. Put your number on my phone, which is kind of funny. It's kind of like, it's, it's also, you know, the, 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 the term relationship always sounds like it's a male and female, but you know, you have a relationship with your family, your, your, your parents, your, your kids, stuff like that. And, and your friends. So this is one of those relationships where it's like it's, it's a little toxic, where it's like, you know, you didn't want nothing to do with me. But now you see me doing big things with, with uh, another artist, uh, which is under your label. I'm still technically MMG. I'm still in, under the umbrella. But now all of a sudden you need me over there with you again recording on your project because now I'm working on, you know, Meek's project. Mm-hmm. So little by little, he started calling me up. Hey, man, you know, I want you to come through. So I come through and then. That turns into, uh, I believe, the album I came back on was uh, Mastermind. I did not, I did not work on uh, God Forgives, which is one of my favorite albums. Also, honestly, mm-hmm. I was very, I was very mad, very disappointed that I wasn't a part of uh, God Forgives. I don't, and I, I had barely any uh, input on Rich Forever, which is a fucking classic mixtape. Yeah, but I, I love Mastermind because it does that. Yeah, he takes stuff out of what i was talking about out of thinking we're rich and he's like taking like these little right like self-help things and 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 putting it in and just giving it a positive spin whenever people are like it's not positive rap it's like oh you haven't really listened to rick ross thing because most of his stuff is like (laughs) it's pretty much on like getting your stuff together and being self-made so 100 percent. yeah yeah and again that's how i you know i learned I learned that from him firsthand, you know, just being uh, being around him and watching him work. He's definitely a a lead uh, a lead by example kind of guy. Yeah. And um, and um, that project, yeah, um, we were, you know, we were definitely reading Forty Eight Laws of Power. Yeah, Forty Eight Laws of Power. It's yeah. The keys, it's the keys to success. The keys. Um. Uh, the gentleman that we sampled was um, what's his name? But that's the the gentleman we sampled. We were listening to a lot of his stuff, and he was talking about the mastermind, and he was talking about you know that whole concept. So when what happened with mastermind um, was the first time again. I, I'm back now. You know, um, he 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 just did God forgives I don't, and now I'm back on the scene. We. I actually had did a, there was a compilation I we did self made three, which um, he had another engineer, which was a great guy. And, and I wanted him to stay, you know, it's funny because a lot of times in the, in, in the engineering world, it's very, uh, yeah. it's all those <laughs> yeah. things. you know, I, Hey man, I fuck with you, but you know, don't, don't take none of my work. You know, yeah. after, after <laughs> and exactly. I, I came into this already knowing the experience of being the only engineer on hand and knowing the workload uh-huh. and, I w- we were doing this two man system when I came back where he was he 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 was a, actually a really really great engineer, um, and I begged him to stay, but him and Ross were already kind of falling out, and so Ross was already kind of sliding me back into the fray, and I was begging this guy, let's do this two man thing, 
and he left me. <laughs> he left. I mean, he didn't leave me. I mean, he, I remember he called me and I apologized. He said, I can't take it. I'm out. <laughs> and I said, damn. And then Ross called me right behind him and was like, I told him he, he, he was just warming the seat for you this whole time. <laughs> nah. Come on. Like, like, I don't want to hear that. You just gasped me because now I just took on the workload. Because it's already a, a six man workload in school. Now it's all, all, on, all on me now. So, so I, you know, I successfully finished self made th uh, self made three uh, compilation. Now we're going into uh, his album Mastermind. So this now this was my. At this point, people knew who I was. Um. My peers knew of me. Everybody knew of me. So I took this project very personally. As much as I did Teflon Dawn, but this time, I, my, creatively, I, I wanted to flex myself a little more. And so a lot of those skits and uh, majority of the skits are, are are me and my ideas. You know, we would have like, I, we'd have these kind of like production meetings, like me and Ross would just talk. It'd just be me and him. And uh, we would talk about the concept. We talked about the concept of mastermind. We went through a lot of footage and listened to... Uh, can't believe I can't remember his name right now. Oh, I'm having so many brain farts. I did go out last night. And it was <laughs> That's fine. Um, for my uh, for an artist that I work with him right now. Currently, Bobby Fishgale. He was performing last night. Nice. Um, but um, man, before we before we go, I got to find his name. Um, so I approached this. I was we we approached this like a movie. Um, we 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 would listen to like the chronic and with those skits and and uh, doggy style and talk about how much those skits were iconic and stuff like that. Uh, and and we didn't want to go too crazy like lengthwise or nothing like that, but we definitely wanted to have these segues between songs to really kind of really stitch this whole thing together to make it a complete project, you know. So. Um, I remember at one point, I forgot what the fuck happened, but uh, uh, something happened. I think I, I, I went, I, you know, Ross, like Ross, you know, it's all about, hey, 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 man, we work and we ain't sleeping, we ain't chilling. I think I, I, I think I went to sleep early one day, and he gave me some big pep talk. We were in the studio, and he was like, "Yo, man, I need, I need you, man. I need you to be, you, I need you to be my guru." Uh, like referring to uh, Jay Z and, and Guru, how they work, you know, Guru's Jay Z's guy. I need you to be my yeah. guru. I need you to be that. So like he he would leave out the room and, and before he would walk out, it'd be like two, three in the morning. He's going to sleep. Like, <laughs> stay in here, man, and do your Dr. Dre. And so, of course, and then he would leave me a couple of nugs and, and, some, and, some, and some raps and I would just roll up and, <laughs> and start brainstorming. Yeah, and start brainstorming and I would come up with shit. I'd get in the booth, start using my voice, pitching my voice up and down doing effects, start playing with timings with, with this song, uh, uh, fading out into this song, doing interludes. And then I would just pitch it to him in the morning when he'd wake up. I'd say, hey, I got like three things I worked on last night. You know, let me know. And, um, you know, yay or nay, or I like that. Don't use that. Just keep this. And I started doing that. We got into a, the, the intro of the project. Um, was funny because we were in LA and me and him got into a big argument. I forgot exactly what the hell it was about, but I remember he had me in that chip in my shoulder mode again. So we got into this argument and uh, when we touched down in LA, I went straight to the studio and they had to handle some shit. I don't know, they were doing some promo. And so I, I just started working on this intro and um, that's when I came up with the concept of like uh, um, this album, and these 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 messages you're getting from this guy that we were sampling, um, man, I can't think of his name. Where he's you know he's just talking about the mastermind. It's like these uh, you're intercepting these kind of like uh, secret messages that aren't supposed to be. So you kind of hear it tune in and tune out, and then like it's like it's breaking through and you're getting this little bit of yeah. secret information. It's like uh, your bank account. Is a yeah, hundred and fifty right. million. I was like, what? Right. <laughs> speaking into existence, baby. Like, <laughs> yeah, I like that. That was you. Stuff and then, like that. Yeah. And then so, Tim and story also on the Maybach, M -M -M Maybach music, it, the, the iconic. How did that come about, too? Well, 
well, Maybach the May the Maybach music tag is actually a, a excerpt from the first Maybach music with uh, Jay Z on Teflon Dawn, where you hear the girls and you know what is this Maybach music? I like this Maybach music, sweet. And so that actually that came with Jay. Jay recorded that. That was that came over with Jay's vocals. <sighs> Those were two models that were just talking on the record, and. Um, Ross loved it so much that he was like, man, take that, take that Maybach music part and we're going to start using, we're going to start placing it. So we used to just go Maybach music, Maybach music. And then I think around Teflon, no, after Teflon, right around, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think Mastermind was the first album we really started doing it on. Um, but the D our DJ, Sam Sneak, he was the one who started doing the stutter in the club, you know, he would go, ma, 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 ma. you know, he already have it programmed. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the stutter joint on the, yeah, okay. So, so he had it on the pad already assigned. So, Maybach music, Maybach music, Maybach music, you know, he would just fucking OD it. <laughs> yeah. So, so, me and that other engineer, as a matter of fact, we started, we, we, we did the stutter, we chopped it up. Oh. And then what ended up happening on Mastermind. See, my thing was I never liked to do anything too much. So I, I didn't even want to do M -m 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 Maybach music. So I started doing it mastermind. You started hearing it just do the stutter where you just hear go. Like it's breaking through. My whole thing was like it's a transmission that's coming through. It's breaking through. Like, what is that? And I would pan it. And M -m 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 -m. Oh, nice. No. So if you hear a lot of records, sometimes we wouldn't actually say Maybach music, but you hear M -m -m -m, right before like Ross would go on. And, that was, and, <laughs> and so that became kind of like my unofficial uh that was like my i use that as my thing like emix this is emix is on here oh, okay. no no <laughs> signature signature you know with with the maybach flair it's like i can't use it now you know i don't know yeah, like, yeah. I do that somebody else's mix you know what i mean it's not yeah, yeah. But for yeah that was iconic i don't know anybody that didn't really know if you knew of rick ross you knew you were like oh yeah maybach May May music like that's yeah. how i heard it. you played it for me yeah, yeah. <laughs> heck yeah <laughs> that's man we, we 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 took that so serious that um you know, that's where I got blessed. You know, Ross shouted me out on the record, uh, the Little Wayne record. Yeah. Um, you know, shout out to my engineer E Mix. And that was a big record too. That was a Little Wayne record. It's one of the bigger records on the on the album and a lot of people's favorites. And um, and I think that was just uh because we were going in so hard and I was taking this whole thing to another level, you know, on my part. You know, he was taking it to another level on his side, but I was also equally as passionate as him so i think that was him just recognizing that and giving me that shout out i remember when he gave me the shout out i was like i acted like i didn't want to react because i didn't want him to say uh like no take that out or something like that. <laughs> like what do you think and i'm like yeah that's cool you know it sounds good <laughs> I, 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 I was hoping that thing would get swept under the rug we will he'll forget about it and we're gonna get it into mastering and, and then it's a wrap we're done it's it's on the album but but yeah, so it made it, um, yeah. and then that took my career to another level because now, now, now my peers started like fucking with me, and um, you know, I, the, people started calling. I start, I got a, I got an interview. I still have it up here, framed. Uh, XXL magazine behind the boards. They called yeah, me. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I beat you up on that. Yeah. So what's crazy is on the SSL, right? You were just like yeah. sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> and what's so crazy is, and I had worked with Leslie uh, prior to this. I worked with him on Tef on, on Deep in a Rap, as a matter of fact. So me and yeah. Leslie had worked. Um, I hadn't seen Leslie in a while. And we were, uh, and when that when that came out, and I posted it, I remember he 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 texted me, and he was like, "Yo, uh, I don't know any studio manager in the world that would let you let anybody get away with that." <laughs> Exactly. I was like, whoa, okay, let's go, baby. <laughs> so of course I did it when uh they didn't know and, <laughs> and but I it's a dope ass shot though, man. That's that's iconic. That's oh, a yeah, dope no, shot. No Photoshop. I was sitting on that fucking exactly. <laughs> you you need to uh that could be a logo. You should fit that with the e and you sitting on a <laughs> Yeah, no, like would, you know, because my thing was, man, it's gonna be my first, my my first uh, real interview, and it's gonna be in print. 
I need like I need my this this to be like because I, I you know what it was too. I was again, this was already me being around Ross in my mindset was different in my approach, yeah. my branding. And oh. uh, I had saw some other people's uh you know their interviews, and you know, they're always kind of like with their elbow and it's like the side. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Or or the I'm reaching for a random button pole. <laughs> and I was like, man. What do I do to stand out? What do I do? And I was like, I'm gonna just sit on this fucker like it's like my throne. I'm just gonna sit on this shit. And um, it came out, man. It was, it was big, and for a long time I couldn't tell anybody what studio that was. I still don't. <laughs> honestly, I, don't, I, know. I think years later, I still don't want to know that I sat on that fucking board. But what's crazy about this now is, um, and I know I'm being super long winded. I know we should be just but we're, we're we're definitely getting on the latter half. But <laughs> but, but uh, honestly, it's like all good, man. We ain't talked in a long time, so we good. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what it is too. You know, I'm talking to you. If I was talking to somebody else, I'd be like, hey, man. You know, that's when you kind of give an answer, and then it gets quiet for a second because then I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh no, I, I'm glad for all the detail, yeah, man. I mean, Thank you. But I, but I like to tell these stories in context because, like, with every uh, there's there's certain parts in 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 people's in these career in this career that people don't. It's like you, if I tell you it, like again, theoretically, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But when you're going through it, it's different. So like now, I'm getting this recognition. I, I you know, I, I I I was enjoying being in the in the background. Yeah. I was I was enjoying just kind of doing my thing and seeing how people reacted to my work and uh, without fanfare. But now um, I'm getting interviews. Now people know who this is. So I started taking it personal. Honestly, that's why I did Mastermind the way I did, because I, I already by Teflon Dawn, people knew who I was. And um, how I knew even it may be a little selfish in my own mind as far as like I know they're listening to Rick Ross, but they're also listening to me. So they're listening to my work and um yeah, and without your mixes, I mean those songs would probably sound different. That is yeah, yeah for sure. Oh, I, and that's why I love Rick Ross's stuff. It just slaps out of the speaker before yeah. I even knew that you were a part of it. I was like, Man, his mixes <laughs> and, and don't get it twisted. Like there was other there were other mix engineers. Leslie mixed uh, you know, Leslie was Justice League's guy, so he did all uh, you know, oh, those records. And I, uh, I was just happy that they actually put a a premium on it sounding as good as it does. So, I mean, there are yeah. some bigger artists that you know they're mix, you know, yeah, right, mix yeah. to be a little like ah, a lot, okay, a lot of them, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. but yeah. in particular though, I yeah, I give it up stuff. to you guys and 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 Ross, like all of his shit is like very immaculate and like very yeah. crisp clean. and clean, clean and, and clean. you hear the vocals and it makes sense and yeah, right. so. Yeah. Yeah, it's, the thing about that situation before I moved to the, what, I, what I was saying is like that with that situation, even if I didn't mix it, I was still very hands on with it because Ross didn't talk to any of the other engineers. So it was like <laughs> he, would, he would tell me and then I would. So I, 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 kind of what I was telling you before, where I would bump heads with everybody. It was a weird mm. situation for me that started even back in Deeper Than Rap, where I was his engineer. And if, but also when I would, you know deal with other people i became his a and r basically where now you know let's say leslie's mixing a record i would go to the session and i say turn this up turn this down because if i brought the because this happened to me where i brought the song back i didn't mix it and ross is like yo why does it sound like this why don't you, yo i i ain't gonna send you no more because i need somebody that's gonna get this shit done right and da 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 and then so then i i took that with me so the next time i'm like hey man turn this up turn this down. and then these guys are like you know, these are my uh, the people I look up to. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. And they're out here consistently putting out big records. Uh -huh. and, and I'm just still young in the game. Yeah, I'm just for us. Me. Exactly. So, yeah, like, for you to tell me, man, <laughs> hey, why doesn't Ross show up? And I'm like, yo, I'm Ross. Ross. <laughs> I am. Yeah, I am Ross. Like, exactly. Ross literally, you know what I like. Go uh -huh. and tell them. Exactly. It was, it was my job to make sure that they mix it the way that he's going to want it. So, AKA, kind of even infusing my flavor. So, even if I didn't actually mix the record, I still recorded it, edited it, and still executive kind of oversaw the whole production before, you know, just to just to make his vision kind of happen. So, but shout out to Leslie, shout out to Ray C, shout out to Fabian, 
And, uh, you know, there's a couple other guys in there that I'm probably missing, but uh, those are the main guys that have been contributors uh, up yeah. besides myself. And uh, so anyway, yeah, so now I'm, I, I'm getting this kind of like shine and people are like checking for me. So now, honestly, I'm, I'm feeling a different type of pressure, which, again, I flexed it on uh, Mastermind. But now moving forward after Mastermind, I felt like I had to do it again. And, and what am I going to do to top Mastermind? So we ended up, I, we moved a little fast, I, I believe. And I forgot what the situation was, but uh, I remember the concept for the next project was uh, kind of like that old real hood, like Master P vibe, you know, which we, this became, uh, it's on my wall right here. This is uh, Hood Billionaire. Mm, yeah. And so Hood Billionaire is another one, even though it really didn't do chart that great, uh, I think it I think it debuted number I don't know in the top five, but for Ross that you know is like a flop because because he's number one in nothing. Uh -huh. Um but um it's actually a really good album and honestly production wise, again, we went in pretty heavy on uh I did skits and to the point where I had to go to mastering because I had already pre-mastered it and I had to like just make sure that uh just help Chris get the timings correct between my uh my skits and everything and Cause I had already had it all timed out and had already burnt it the disc and Ross already under already fell in love with the timings and everything. Uh -huh. So I was really getting hands on creatively with that. Um, so yeah, moving forward. And this is like, what I was saying is like, okay, so you get your success and all that stuff and you're happy for that. But then it's a new kind of pressure when, um, uh, you know, your peers are listening now and you know, the industry is listening and everybody's kind of, you know, checking for you it's 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 a little it's 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 it can get to you because you know you're not behind the scenes anymore yeah. you're you're an artist equally you know yeah. because some people are tuning in just to check out what emix is doing yeah what's yeah. your latest yeah. <laughs> yeah like yo that i want man he did such dope shit on the last album i want to hear what crazy shit he's going to do on this album you know mm -hmm. and aside from even the artist just yo i fuck with e it eases, mm -hmm. always does some new shit every project. So like I literally would sit there and like one of the things I started doing was making new tags, like even mastermind. I made a mastermind tag mastermind and I would just keep plugging that in the, in the project all over the place. So then this one was hood billionaire. So I created a hood billionaire tag and I would do that. And I, I would just try and do stuff sonically. I would make it a point. Like, what am I going to do this time to kind of just do something different? I, I didn't ever like uh, just, recording it cleaning it up and it's done i would i always wanted to add some kind of ear candy you know yeah. Yeah. and and you know and that you know you deal with that and, and then uh let's see so after that blah 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 you know i did a couple more albums um we ended up falling out again um it, this time it was a little it was a lot it was a cooler fallout it was more or less just uh, you know, I think we were just around each other a lot and it was just time to kind of move forward i think i started feeling myself feel uh my head was kind of bumping against the ceiling, you know, um, I, I, I wanted to kind of branch out a little more. I had my company going and stuff like that. And, uh, and, um, I did that, which again was a scary point because, you know, leaving from there, uh, everybody knew I was Ross's guy. So a lot of people that even, even though they fucked with me, like they didn't necessarily, uh, look out for me anymore because, you're busy, bro. You're always with him, you know. So it was a it was a transition point going solo on my own, where where people like everybody would say, yeah, 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 next project, next project. But you don't even know how long far out that next project is. Project eight, yeah. You know, and um, oh man, you talk about like finding inner strength and all that shit, man, and talking to yourself in the morning, taking my kid to school and driving home, thinking, okay, like, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna do this? And, you know, I just beat myself up every day. I was like, yo, if you, if, you know, my thing was I've been around these guys that are winning for a long time. I've been around Diddy. I've been around Jay. I've been around Ross. I've been around Khaled. I've got to sit in rooms and, and listen to these guys speak. And if I can't fucking make something work out of that, I'm an asshole, you know. <laughs> I know. You're, you're in with the top chefs and, and what they do. And you, yeah, you didn't I learn how to. Yeah, and I get that from my dad where it's like a no excuses kind of thing, you know, yeah. kind of like, hey, man, yeah. I'm not going to fucking wallow in my own shit. Exactly. You know, I, I got to make this shit happen. 
exactly. Because I've had, I can't, I can't, even, even if the situation wasn't planned out, you know, perfectly, which no situation is, um, I got to fucking make this shit happen. Again, all this stuff has been put in play and I've been in these, in these rooms and these exclusive rooms with these people that win. And if, if all they talk about is winning and, 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 and put that out, that energy out for me to kind of like drop the ball on that, you know, so it was it was a it was a personal thing to me too. It was a new chip on my shoulder, but now it was a chip on the shoulder against myself, if that yeah. makes sense. Well, I'm yeah. like, you've had you've been awarded all the knowledge that you any that any of those guys would have took and in, in, in fucking made a, a empire. How in the fuck aren't you using that? And so uh-huh. I ran with that, and and it, and, it, and it took a little time, but um, slowly but surely, man, I started building up. My company started getting uh, recognition. I started working with artists. A lot of I started kind of redoing kind of what I did in the, in the in the early days was really kind of reestablish myself in the Miami music scene. Uh-huh. Because of my son, he was at this point like starting high school. You know, he was what like seventh grade. What is it? No, ninth grade. Yeah. And, uh, and, okay, uh, so you had freedom. You know, he could take care of himself. It, it wasn't as yeah, it wasn't like, as I mean, yeah. And I didn't even go as deep as on that shit. I used to, man, when he was a baby, I he used to sleep in. He's met every artist that I've ever worked with, damn near, because he would be in the studio with me. Because I mean, that's it was that life. He would, oh uh, yeah. I'd have him set up sleeping in the in the lounge area and shit like that. It was crazy, but um, yeah. Now he's going into high school. I'm rooted in Miami, so now it's like a matter of uh, Dennis. Stay with me now. I see you. I see you uh, yawning. <laughs> no, I'm not yawning. I was. I was just in my head. No, I'm not. Ain't no sleep in the studio. No sleep, baby. No sleep. <laughs> So I'm rooted in Miami. I'm not really, I'm not trying to travel. I had some, I had some, uh, my dad had kind of felt ill. He used to help me take him to school. So now I'm, I'm taking mm. on that extra pressure. So I'm doing sessions at night and literally parking. Cause my son stayed with my parents. I parked at their place and just text my son. Hey, I'm asleep in the parking lot. Just knock on the window. Cause I would leave a session like six in the morning and just park it. Cause I knew if I went home, I wouldn't wake up in time. So I just passed out in the parking lot and take him to school. And so I knew I was rooted there and I had to step up and, and, and really take on that, that role too. take him to school every day, pick him up from school every day, and also still maintain a, a job in the industry, you know, with whatever yeah. hours were given to me. So um, I reestablished myself in the Miami music scene where I didn't have to travel as much. So I was working a lot with Zoe Dollars and, and uh, a lot of art, young artists coming out from uh, Miami uh, from Slip and Slide Records and stuff, I reestablished a, a relationship with them. Uh-huh. With Mike Smith and FSO De Niro, these young cats that are, are bubbling now, but um, at the time, you know, they were all brand new. Um, and then I, I looked up on a, a, a chance encounter with uh, Gucci. Um, I had worked with Gucci back on uh, MC Hammer, and I worked mm-hmm. on with him on a mixtape song we did. And that was old Gucci. That was big Gucci, you know, lean and the big gut and all that. And uh, I bumped into him now and he had just moved to Miami. And uh, he was, you know, he just had got out of jail maybe a, a year or so. And he was on a whole different path. You know, he, he had lost the weight and he was a lot more focused. And uh, OK, so we're talking about just two, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, uh, probably about three years ago, three and a half years yeah. ago now. And uh, me and him, man, I don't know. We just, I, it was a one-off. My boy uh, was like, hey, Gucci needs somebody tonight. Um, are you down to do it? You know, at the time I was like, hell yeah, I need any kind of clientele, especially someone with some kind of name recognition like that. So I did the one-off with him and then um, he hasn't stopped calling me since, you know, it was kind of just like that where, you know, we went right into a different project. Like the first project I worked with, I think the first song I recorded was I Get the Bag, which is now like five times platinum, him and the yeah. middle. Yeah, the Migos track. Okay, dope. Yeah. yeah, I get the bag, and then I did a weekend record with him, and man, a Jeremiah record. We did like a bunch of big records fast, and that album did very well. I think it's a, I think the album is gold, but we got a couple of platinum singles on there. I get the bag, like I said, it's like four or five times platinum now. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, huge. Yeah, man, we just we just got into this working relationship. Um, um, I think he 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 you know he he respected and admired my my professionalism and I think he needed somebody that's been in the game enough where this wasn't like a yeah it's not fun time this is not a yeah. streaming time a selfie time 
yeah. you know, I'm used to getting it, getting busy, getting it, getting it done and getting the fuck out of there. And that's what he was doing. So and he like worked out and stuff. So he literally, he does like six hour sessions and he's done. We do like five songs in six hours. Oh, he doesn't okay. play. He doesn't want to hang out. He doesn't want to do shit like that. You know, we'll, we'll chum it up a little bit in between songs. Like, oh, did you, did you hear about blah, blah, blah. But it's like in the process of loading up the next song. Like, let's not stop doing that. Because if not, mm-hmm. then I'll just chill at home. I don't need to be here. I don't need to be in the studio to do that. Yeah. So, um, nice. Cause, I mean, he stopped smoking and stuff. So I mean, he, he so what you? Yeah, he was just oh, like, like bah, bah. yeah, yeah. yeah so he, yeah, he's pretty. Uh, you know, he sharpened up and um, and then um, you know, he started his record label. So like, even currently now, I'm doing a lot of, I'm doing most of the work for his 1017 label. Um, you know, and and I say that just because you know, again, this is 18 years in. Um, uh. you know, we breeze through it, but. Um, um, you know, there's a certain level. I think uh, it's almost like the eye of the tiger, and you can kind of see it in each in, in people that have survived this industry. And I think that's what Gucci saw in me, where he's like, you know, you've I've been through all of it, and I've I've and I'm beyond the hype now. You know, I've been around the world. I've been in all the biggest clubs. I've you know, I've dabbled in everything you can do, all the debauchery of the music industry. I've done that, and yeah. now to the point now where. It, I'm all about the business and how do we uh, maximize the business? And, yeah, exactly. Right. How do we build and and, and and be you know and grow old in this the right way? Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. and, so, um, and I and I learned that from Gucci too. Now you know where I I'm blessed, man. You know it's it's crazy even saying that where it's like I I I I, I can be uh, close with a Rick Ross, but then also be close with a Gucci man. Yeah. You know, been Which, able to be, be very close to the palate. <laughs> This yeah, is what? very interesting read. <laughs> what? I read Gucci's book too. Oh, which yeah. Which is very, very, that was a very good read. Yeah. I yeah, mean, definitely. yeah, the, he's the, all about us. So, yeah, it's, it's like, wow. Writer, the same writer wrote uh, the Rick Ross book too. He wrote both of them. <gasps> oh, okay. Nice. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah shout, out, shout out to Neil. Neil's my guy. Good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, but same mentalities, different, different takes on it, but same thing. Yeah. I learned, there's things that I've learned with Ross that's instilled in me, but then I then it's kind of like after learning that I was kind of more open to understanding uh, uh, different hustle structures. Basically. Yeah, Gucci's way and do it. Yeah, because they all have their own Gucci hustles. Works. Yeah, you know Gucci works a different way. You know he comes from that Atlanta vibe and and he has that whole different mentality. But it's all rooted in in, in progress. Uh, 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 moving forward, uh, yeah. maximizing every moment, every time, all your time. He's very big on don't waste my time. Uh-huh. You know, that's why I tell you, like, he literally will book a six hour session. We have, we have clients, we have producers come in and say, Yo, is this right? Are we leaving at six? Yeah, 12 to six, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. We're not doing late night, we're not doing, hey. I'm getting in, we're, we're working, and I'm getting out. And that's how he works. And, uh, and make a monster record. So it's like. Make, make big records. And so even with his record label now, he 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 puts a pressure on, on the new artists that he has because they're not used to working like that. Yeah. So he'll get in there and knock out three records. And these guys are still working on the first one. And and, and what I'll tell you is, um, even if kind of like back up and just talk about that a little bit. You know, I come from where Ross, me and Ross, that procedure is very meticulous, very time consuming we'll sit on a song for so long and even like the the lyrics will probably be rewritten already but we'll still be molding the record we'll, we're talking sound effects we're talking about breakdowns we're talking about this where gucci's more like i'm 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 gonna knock it out e do your thing and and let's work on the next one he doesn't even want to hear me do my thing he wants to just get to the next one e do that shit on your own time I'm 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 feeling it right now. I'm feeling productive. Let's uh-huh. get the next record out. And uh-huh. then then we can take that extra time later for you to mix and make my voice sound amazing and and you know do all that shit. But he's he's real let's let's get let, let's get let's be productive constantly. Uh-huh. Yeah. And none of them are wrong, none of them are right. Yeah. Uh, it's just how you get to the end goal. And uh-huh. so that that's a learning experience itself for me, where I came from They're years. Of successful, so I mean, yeah, you just see that it can be whatever works for your person, you know. 
Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, and then that's what I only, uh, I do now, especially now in my, my, I'm, I just learn, man. I, you're, you're constantly learning. If you don't think, you, if you think you know it all, you're, you're, you know, you're on the downswing because you're only destroying yourself slowly without yourself even knowing it. You know, complacency is a killer uh-huh. uh, when you just think you got it. And, you know, so I'm constantly still to this day, man, I listen to everything, you know, whenever there's a new j- song out or a new album out, you know, I I I, uh, I jog, I bike ride, and I just pop in the song, and I just I pop in the album. I listen to the whole album down, mm-hmm. and uh, just to see what they're doing. Yeah. And there's, there's tidbits and stuff there, and then there's OGs out that I listen to, and there's a lot of my uh, my peers that I listen to. I'm a big fan of uh, you know, mixed by Ali. Uh, my 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 oh, my uh, similar. Look, huh? You heard about him? Uh... He he bought the Death Row studio. Yes, yes, he did. yeah, yeah. So shout out to him. Check it out. Yeah, that's yeah. a big move. Yes, yeah. Shout out, <laughs> to, yeah. shout out to Cruz, which is uh, Meek's engineer. He's he, a lot of people mistaking us. They, they, we call each other uh, cousins because everybody thinks we look alike. <laughs> so Cruz. Like Cruz, okay, I have to look for you. <laughs> they, and he he, you know him. What is it? There's there's only about there's a handful of engineers that really got shouted out, and so he's he got shouted out. You know, Meek, turn me up, Cruz. That's like a big. Oh, one. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, big. Uh, that became big. You know, uh-huh. way bigger than shout out to my engineer E Mix. You know, that was on the end of the song. <laughs> Cruz got me beat because uh, he's on the top of the record. Turn me up, Cruz. Ugh, like damn. That's hard. So you know, I definitely um I definitely lean on him. I I, I listen to what he's doing. James Royo is real dope. He's Ty Dollar Signs engineer. I listen to what he's doing. And then there's the big boys, you know, like Mike Dean is is a living legend, man. Whenever he's doing anything with Travis Scott or or, or uh, he just did, uh, you know, he does all the Kanye stuff. Mm-hmm. He made, when Kanye did that run about two years ago where they, like, everybody released the project. Kanye, Nas, Pusha T, Tiana Taylor, you know. Oh. Yeah. You know, when he just kind of did that back to back every month type of thing, you know, uh-huh. Mike Dean mixed and mastered all of that oh, and he man. produced on it. So Mike Dean is somebody that like whenever whatever Mike's doing, I'm listening. I just <laughs> definitely uh, what yeah. do you call it? a savant, man. He's he's different. Yeah. Uh, so, questions on the gear side. I, I remember we, we were talking about AudioScape. Remember in, in March? What? uh what's your gear at your home studio um well i got a bunch of i got a bunch of stuff i'm i got like a hybrid setup here so um i'm running off a laptop right now i think i'm gonna move to a desktop though because i'll be pushing this thing pretty tough but uh mm-hmm. i got a i got a, a lynx uh aurora n uh as my uh interface nice. I, I really like them um I, I i had moved up from a pro tools uh the hell was that HD Omni, which was a workhorse, and I, I did some amazing stuff on that thing. But I mean, the jump in sound quality up to the Lynx Aurora has been amazing. Um, I got um, I run everything through this. Uh, what is that? That's uh, fifty fifty nine uh, uh, Neve uh, satellite uh, line mixer. Mm-hmm. I go into a master bus processor, also uh, by Neve, the Portico master bus processor. No, no, okay. Yeah, is it all like it's digital and analog, right? Well, all of that's actually all di- uh, all, all analog. That's all analog. Okay. So I just got it kind of like really. I, I got it now at a set it and forget it kind of thing, where I just kind of I just want to send it through the transformers and get that that feel. I, I just want to kind of push the transformers a little bit, give me some some of that analog, you know, warmth. Yeah. <laughs> Um, sometimes, I mean, a lot of people don't even hear it. I don't even know sometimes if I hear it. It just gets, now it's at this point, it's just soothing. It just, I, I love when I run my shit through there. It just gives me this, like, it sounds uh, dope still. So yeah, keep doing yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's a security <laughs> okay. blanket at this time, you know? Well, um, it feels like it. It's how yeah, it comes yeah. out the speaker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got the audio escape, uh, uh, G compressor. I put that, my drums through there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the okay, like SSL, right? Yeah. Yeah, like the SSL type type G compressor. So I put yeah. my drums there. Worth it? I think so. I love okay. it, man. Honestly, and it, it sounds great. It sounds great. And it's like dual mono. You can send the mono and stereo signal. 
Um, I believe so. I never really pushed it to do that. I know some of them do. I'm not sure if Audioscape does it. Okay. I know. I think. Uh, I think uh, the other dude does them. That he does the custom joints. Uh, I forgot their names, but they they take so long to build those. Though. Mm, okay. I forgot. I forgot their name. Stam. Mm. Uh, Stam. Stam Audio. Stam. Okay. I think Stam Audio does a a, a dual mono. I don't oh, know if it does a dual mono. Even if it does, I don't really need it for that. I really mm. don't patch around. I mean, I, I want to get a patch bay, but I don't have one right now. So I, I just have it kind of like on an in and out kind of thing. I either have it in or I have it out. I don't, you know, it's going to go on my stereo. It's going to go on my drum bus or sometimes I don't use it at all. Yeah. And that's pretty much about it. After that, I got, you know, all the plugins. I got a bunch of UAD shit and uh, plug in a oh. line stuff like that. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, man, you know, I really try not to base it too heavy on, on the gear too much. You know, uh, I think my career, I think I, I, I kind of, grew in my career uh because uh again with ross it was kind of like uh can you or can't you and if you can't then i'll find somebody that can so i was never going to say i can't you know what i mean so whatever the room looked like or sounded like or whatever plugins they had that's what we're rocking with and i kind of i kind of i kind of go by that now i mean obviously the uh bigger bigger clients if there's a budget there then i definitely want you know some sort of like mic selection pre preamps and stuff like that but uh, besides that, man, this is hip hop, man. It's supposed to be grimy. It's supposed to, you know, especially the shit I do. I do trap shit. I do street shit. There's murders and drug deals going on. I ain't trying to make this thing sound too clean. I mean, <laughs> you know, do, you, so. do you record those drum machines through analog or they're all like needy stuff? Uh, well, you know, nowadays, you know, they do it in the computer and they just send me the files. Oh, they just yeah. send you a WAV file. And that's it. Right? Yeah, now I just get the files dumped out. You know, I haven't, man. I haven't tracked out instruments in years, man. I remember back in the day when we were still doing MPCs and and uh, Simpty code, and, and and I had to run each sound through. You know, we would do eight. We would, you know, we had a breakout from the MPC with eight eight outputs, so we'd do eight eight at a time. Mm -hmm. And I would bring them in and kind of bring them in and get their levels right and EQ them on the way in through the SSL. But now. Okay. I do it on. The, I do it after the fact anyway. I still treat it like, uh, you know, I still uh, treat them, and I, I I'll add distortion. I'll kind of try and give it an analog feel, or some lo-fi, just mm -hmm. to give maybe the eight oh eight a little buzz to it. Oh, okay. so it gets a little more tangible, so it still has that that analog feel, you know, because I I hate when it's just too clean. It sounds weird to me. Mm -hmm. Agree. No. Oh, wow. Very digital. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. So, what's what's going on now? We ain't going nowhere, goddamn it. We here. Now, now I just gotta know what's your latest. What, yeah, what, what, what how, you and how to? can people find you and all that type of thing? Uh, I mean, currently, uh, well, I just put out. Um, I mean, I'm working on a bunch of stuff. So, anything 1017 right now, I'm doing. Uh, we just did. Uh, you know, I did the last. I don't know, seven, eight Gucci albums, and then I did. Uh, um, I think the last. I think we've done three uh compilation projects with uh his new uh you know label with uh which is made up of uh a dude from uh, atlanta named fujiano another another two guys from memphis uh big scar and Pooh shiesty which Pooh shiesty is is really man i was just at the club and they just play all the Pooh shiesty stuff and they play a lot of food too um then we got the two girls which the the so icy girls which is uh love enchanting and uh keisha day right. we also got a, and they're they're from uh Houston. Well, I think one is from Houston. They're both from Texas. I don't want to miss. I think one's from Dallas, one's from Houston. I don't, they take that shit serious. I don't want to say Working with them. And then I just uh, finished a couple projects with uh, a cat named Little Loaded, which is signed to uh, Epic Records, which he's got a major buzz. You know, it's different, man. Um, I, I would be lying if I told you guys I knew, I understand that scene as much as you think I would, as far as the young kids go. Yeah. So I literally was working on this kid, man, and then um the A and R had to send me the numbers and say, "Hey, man, look, this is the song you mix, and it's like two million, you know, streams." And I'm like, "Wow, this kid is oh, this is real deal." And he's like, "Yeah, this is all his songs. All his songs is two million and up." And I'm like, "Wow." So I found out this kid was like a big thing, like you know, yeah. he's, and he's brand new. His name is yeah. Little Loaded. Um, okay. I think he, I forgot where he's from. But um, him, I just put out two projects on him. I'm work. I'm currently uh, I just put out another project on Tafia a couple months ago, and now we're working on the next one. 
Um, who else? I think I got some stuff coming out with Zoe Dollars. And it just kind of doesn't stop. I, and then I have a lot of uh, one-offs by like just cats that don't have any representation, but find me on Instagram and stuff like that. That, uh, you know, I do a record for them and then they'll come back and say, hey, man, that record, you know, it's out of here, man. I, you know, we're doing a whole project. So I got a lot of those in the works where. And then now I don't know if you guys, you, I'm sure you guys have heard of Clubhouse. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, so I've been on Clubhouse and we, we'll do like, you know, I'll talk on there and I've met a, a lot of upcoming artists that um potentially i'll be working with uh this year coming oh, up oh, i'm always okay. you know I'm following, always, huh? <laughs> I'm following you yeah. on clubhouse <laughs> yeah yeah i've been kind of i took a step back though that shit there man is addicting man you'll be on there like eight I hours know, i know i know like certain people i see a bunch of time i'm like wow they in another house rumor <laughs> yeah no and they don't leave they yeah. leave. they stay there it's crazy <laughs> They stay on there 12 hours, man. I did it one night. I did literally, I did almost 12 hours on there because Dougie Fresh was on there. And he's like, Dougie Fresh is one of my hip hop superheroes. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's what I got moving forward. Um, you know, my company is the Spectrum Theory. Uh, I have a website, the Spectrum Theory.com. Uh, people can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and I think Snapchat is all the same. It's at emix305. Um, you know, and then you definitely can get a flavor for what I'm doing because I, 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 I treat IG as like my business card. I just kind of put whatever I got going on on there. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty consistent and current. Um, okay, we'll have all of those uh those links in the, uh, the summary yeah. for the podcast. Yeah, so I, totally, I totally skipped over, you know, working with Megan. You know, we're, we're I think we got three Grammy nominations for Savage right now. So. Oh, yeah. oh, that, that was the Holy big cow, drama. yes. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I kind of totally skipped over with Megan. I don't know how I got to do that. I know, right? I, I currently work with Megan the Stallion too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Have like the, the hottest song of 2020 in a pandemic. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We totally we somehow both. that. Yeah. We, we both, because I meant to be like, oh yeah, but hey, you know. But we've listened to it on studio monitors. Oh heck yeah, that thing hard. jumps out the free. Yeah, yeah. yeah Let's go. That's, that's Jay White on the production. Jay, you know, Jay White comes from, uh, you know, he did all the big Cardi stuff, Bodak. Yeah. Right? like that so yeah that was a cool that was a that in that and and, and, and you know not to get too long-winded on it because we're already yeah. but <laughs> i met jay already like i told you me and me and gucci had this organic thing going on and we brought in jay white because really the label brought him in because hey this is the hot guy and so we brought him in and man i remember that day uh gucci didn't show up that day i forgot what happened he didn't so it was just me jay sitting in the room and we just organically kind of just became buddies man and um then when when gucci came in the next day and we all worked together we knocked out like five records five six records and um we we we, we had some kind of, this is a good just a different like uh i don't know energy amongst us and so um i had recorded uh megan on a gucci feature and uh, she was real hesitant. She didn't want to work with me per se. She she had her own person, so she didn't know how the process was gonna go with a new guy. And uh, you know, we all assured her, you know, hey, I I kind of know what I'm doing. It's okay. You'll be all right. So we got through it, and she loved it. She had a great experience. So then the next time, um, she came to Miami. Um, uh, they called me and requested me. Hey, we're gonna be in Miami. Would you be available to record Megan? You know, she wants to work with you. So I was like, cool. Oh, that's great. You know, we hit it off. And and, and the thing about Megan is uh, Megan, I, that combination of Megan, me and Jay, it was so I, I, that's some of the most fun I've had in a session. Nice. But we just had a lot of fun. We we talked a lot. We we bonded on just a personal level, just being just we, we like similar things, you know, what's on TV and just music and stuff like that. And we just laughed a lot. Definitely drank a lot. Uh, uh, she likes to, uh, what do we, we drive the boat? <laughs> Pours the liquor in your mouth. So we drank, <laughs> and um, yeah, man, we we did Savage. And I mean, again, that's kind of like, that's my, that's, that's my second BMF. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. That thing ripped. Mm-hmm. That, that thing was everywhere. Sounded dope. Did you mix it at home? Um, well, no, well, they kind of, 
politics, man. I mean, basically it sounds the same, but I didn't technically mix it. I didn't, wasn't the final hands on it. They gave it to Jason Joshua. But if you listen to my, my, my rough mix in his mix, it's, it's similar to the point where Jay even called me and didn't know the difference and told me that, you know, he started telling everybody I mixed it. And then I had to call the label and say, Hey, was I the final hands on this? And they were like, Oh no, we sent it to J Jason. But you know, there's minor things, but it's, it is what it is. I, I wish huh. it's one of those. It's something as minor as that, that just takes it even that much higher, but I'm still very proud of it because um, of being in the room and actually being there when it was actually accepted, you know, uh -huh. but basically the mix is my, it's it, he pretty much ran off of my, uh, Square what I had there. yeah, I had the outline for it. And he, it's kind of like, we, we call, I, I kind of say like, I ran, I ran the football down 99 yards and then, uh, in a ladder, he, yeah, he, 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 piled, he piled in on the next play to stumble into the end zone. You know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. It was like a layup. I ollie ooped it for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. you know, I'm not taking that away from Jay, uh, Jason. Jason's a, a, a monster heavy hitter, yeah. but I, I gave it. That was a layup. They, they. <laughs> but, yeah. but again, um, I actually had just talked to. I texted uh, Megan uh, for for New Year's, and uh, we talked about it a little bit. Just like she was, uh, we talked about man. You know. Uh, Let's get these Grammys and you know, let's do it again. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That, that's about. Yeah. Dope. All right. Oof. Thank you so much, Eddie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, gave you a, I definitely gave you a shitload of content. <laughs> hey, yeah. this is like a three-parter. <laughs> hey, however you want to do it. Thank you so much, man, though, man. I appreciate you for letting me All ramble right. on. Hey, I I know the grind. And all those stories, I got a stories to match you with it. So we oh, were yeah. all, <laughs> we were all out here grinding and I'm just so happy, you know, that, that it worked out and, you know, for sticking with it. Yeah. We've, we've all had those, moments. as you mentioned, those moments of like, what the, you know, yeah. and, but you just, yeah, but you know, it's so funny at those last moments, it's always that sparkle. Spark, yeah, spark. right when you're like, all right, I don't know, this is, and then it happened with Ross yeah. or you know Gucci man, you know, just like yeah. that, right when you were like, I don't know, yeah, <laughs> yeah man, I, when I tell you, man, several several times, man, it's it's always to the brink of like, and then it happens, so yeah. you know, and that's and that's the kind of stuff that all you can do as as an individual is be prepared, prepare yourself. Exactly. Sometimes you don't even know what you're preparing yourself for. for and sometimes it's just being keeping a positive mental attitude, staying healthy, um, mm -hmm. and, and staying driven, and 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 the the opportunities that present themselves. And if you have a clear mind and, and and you know you're trying to look forward, then then you know what to do with those opportunities when they come. It's it's not even about just being a great engineer or a great. It's just being over overall, just mind, body, and soul, trying to keep that together to be able to you know receive your blessings. You know, yeah. That's those kind of situations because there's been so many times, man, where like I said, like you, I, what, we, what we talked about and what you just said, where it's like, I'm really like on my last <laughs> bit of anything. Nickel, your last nickel, you're about to hear yeah, lights off. Your last rent. nerve. <laughs> <laughs> Relative looking at you and, crazy. And, like, what and, are you? <laughs> and nothing less than biblical, man. Like the sky opens up and the sun, the sun shines on you and the last minute yeah yeah hey man, hey man i'm i'm ready and that's all yeah. you can do it's ready yeah. and it's all worth it right at 100%, the end of the percent i mean i like every album i would say you know you go crazy you freak out because you're trying to meet deadlines and there's those moments even in there even though i love what i do like i'm still like oh my god but when the album comes out and you get that reaction from the fans it always reminds you of this is why i do it this is this is that's something that I, I don't get from anything else. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I, I was I was always glad to be on the last part of it, which is live, when you just see the people enjoy it. Yeah, just, you you know. sit in that. yeah, man. See, that's beautiful, man. I, I, love it. It. Hey, I hear people saying, I've been waiting for this all month <laughs> to see what we do. You know, to, to hear yeah. what you did, you know, a year ago, a few years ago, and then we get to bring it home live. And, uh, Man, That's the beautiful that. mix about this, you know. Um, and I respect you guys on a whole nother level because uh, <laughs> that's just another type of chaos, man. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That live game is its own. It'll pitch you on your knees, just like the uh the studio game and trying to get into it. But um, you know, you just we just kept after it, just like you. So I'm just glad that we can have these conversations 18 years later, Eddie. Jeez. It's a beautiful thing, man. You know, yeah, we're Actually, dying for... I think it'll be 20 next yeah. year. Yeah. Well, not 20 that we graduated. Yeah, it'll be 20 that we graduated. Uh, yeah, we actually met, though. And I'll never forget, yeah. like, August 9th was our first class. The mm -hmm. day before my birthday. It was mm -hmm. August 9th, 2001 was our first, like, class. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 20 yeah. years later, can you believe it? Mm -hmm. This is, yeah, it's I'm just it's glad to see you in it because there's a lot of people. Hundreds of other, you know, of other people that was in our class, and then it's it's only a handful, a handful oh, yeah. that I can still talk to about what we're doing and being in the industry. I it's think, just I thank God every day. I exactly. Mean, there's, there's been several times I've been in, I've been in Dubai. I and I, I literally say music got me here. Music got me here, and I say. I, never i would have never I, I, i've i've achieved things that i've i didn't even imagine for myself you know and that's, yeah. I, I gotta put that in in god's hands man because yeah. how would i even have i would have never even wished this for myself you know so i just you did work and believed and just you know hey it gets yeah. rewarded and that's what i try and tell people that that and that's the ultimate satisfaction it's not even about being happy it's a satisfaction yeah. for me just know right. that i it through when I know that 90 over 90 percent wouldn't right, so right. <laughs> that's like an ultimate satisfaction I mean, I mean I would have I me and, me and Ross would have conversations because you know again he was still coming up in the music scene we, we kind of came up together at the, around the same time you know and hmm. so there was a lot of uh you know uh, uh, you know other rappers other acts in, on the on that scene that you know all faded out you know and we thought we're dope i mean we we would have conversations you know we'd sit around man man whatever happened to so and so man he was dope and it just you know it, that's why you know there's there's a lot of okay your own your own grind and your own you know and you're going to make this work but then there's a lot of other shit you can't explain because it's just some of us made it through and some of us didn't because there's you know there's real life situations some people are like hey oh you know so and so got into a car accident you know fell off or his mom died or there was something that just Damn. happened to them that they couldn't pursue this so somehow some way you know i i've sacrificed everything but always everything out, yeah with with enough energy to still push through and still mm -hmm. you know make it past and, and and thrive and and to be able to say that i haven't had a job in 18 years you know what i mean like uh I, I pay all my rent. Everything is paid for by the studio. You know what I mean? My I, my son goes to college because of music. Yeah. So yeah. those things are, man, like I said, man, I, I, I got a beautiful balcony and a cool view. And I was out there this morning, you know, I go out there every day and just kind of like meditate and and really, uh, you know, it, it be thankful. But also it's kind of like a refocusing because sometimes, you know, I, I remind myself I'm still that, you know, drill sergeant in my head that my dad was and like. Hey man, you like this shit? You want to keep this shit? You gotta work. So gotta work. After I, that, I do that after every time I enjoy it and get all, you know, caught up in the moment. Then I gotta uh, reel it all. I reel it all uh, the way back in. And hey, rent, rent's due in, in uh, next month, motherfucker. You better get up and and go and mix these records. Yeah. So, as much as and, and sometimes I have I have buddies that that you know they they'll ask me stuff about that like you know they'll they'll I'm I'm always happy to talk about the stuff I've worked on, and I got buddies that are like diehard, like my my aunt, which she's like my little sister, so it sounds weird that I say my aunt, but her man is like a Teflon Don. Uh, I don't like he's like cult like, <laughs> like uh, we were just at a at a, at a Christmas dinner or whatever, and uh, he still every time he sees me he wants to. Another tidbit about Tef. I was listening to Teflon Don again the other day, and uh, Ross says this. He did, Do you know what he was meaning like that? What was the energy in the room when he was saying that? So, and you know, and and, and he's so gassed on it, and I have to kind of remind because he's like, man, I can't believe you're just so calm about that. And like, 
the thing about it with this industry, you know, it's always kind of like, what's the next project? You know, like I told you with the ludicrous thing, when I learned how that business, the business works, you can get an accolade, but the accolade is, is fleeting, man. Everybody's moving forward. By the time that accolade, by the time that album comes out, you're, you're already, you, you want to be at least three more projects in. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to have just be put, put out a project and wait for it and, and then start. A, nah, we, we were simultaneously, by the time I was finishing mixing this album, I was already mixing another project. I don't want any downtime. So I, I don't like to bask in it too long. Man. Every once in a while, you know, I think now I appreciate these accolades uh, a little more because, yeah. you know, because, you know, I, I do look at the plaques and stuff and I got my Grammy noms on the on the on the wall and stuff. We didn't even talk about a purple Lamborghini either, which that was nominated for. Oh, uh, yeah. But that, cool. we don't Batman, go into that. Right? that was the Batman sound. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was for the Suicide Squad, which was. Suicide yeah, Squad. Yeah. OK. You know? and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, Skrillex. In Skrillex, I got to work with Skrillex, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Nice. I but, remember um, when he was in a band. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Large. Yeah, yeah. Like a teenage band. That's too funny that he's now. Yeah. You know, um, like, and Mega DJ. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so you know, just uh, uh, basically what I was saying was like, you know, you can't let you know you you enjoy, but you keep moving. That's just the game. That's just the, yeah. how the game works. You know, uh, I, I can't I can't feed my kid from from about you know when an accolade from 10 years ago i mean there's residuals but that's not enough you got to keep yeah building you want to keep building yeah. and what like ross told me too was um he's like you know you know i think a lot of millionaires say when they said kind of it, it's kind of the same feeling of like your first million is the the hardest hardest to make yeah that's, that's the point because the point is is once you figure out how to make it oh this is the game oh this is it so exactly. all I got to do is keep on doing this and I can keep continue to, to make this. I can keep building and growing this. Mm -hmm. And once you kind of learn that that work ethic, then um, and, and you can ingrain it in yourself and make it become habit where, um, you know, you're always getting up. I, I have a saying that I say to myself all the time, which is not really a saying, but it's just a question. It's basically what else can I what else can I be doing? Uh, and usually this is the question I ask myself when um, let's say I finish a project and i'm done that's when i say well, what else can i be doing what else is there that isn't being done yet you know and i'll write a whole new list out of things that need to be done and i'll start checking that list off because um technically especially at this age and this in this point in our careers we're technically never we never don't have anything to do there's always something else we could be doing there's always and even if you check off all your work list you could be doing more for yourself, health wise. Uh -huh. You could be working out. You could be eating right. You could be reading more. There's, there's, there's so many things that you can continuously push yourself to progress further. Um, that's not just work related. It's also about, you know, like I said before, mind, body, and soul. You know, you, you know, the thing about this industry too, between your family and your work, there's always this. I've, I've always been fighting for balance. I'm a Libra, so it's in my nature, you know, where I'm always looking for balance. So I I, I did find a time when I was kind of, I don't know, I, falling into a depression a little bit. But I, I, I kind of really, I was just working so much where I was neglecting my health. Yeah. I was neglecting family time and stuff like that. So I caught it and I started to work on it. Mm. And uh, I started jogging because of that. And, and it was like a, it worked out in two ways where it was like a meditation for me, but it was also something good for my health. Mm -hmm. And so I still do that now where I'll be mixing all day, but then I'll take a jog break or I'll take a bike ride. So nice. I can get that, that physical, get my, yeah. my, 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 my actual oh. fluids flowing and oxygen yeah. through my body. And, yeah. and, and, and outside at beautiful Miami heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just getting that outside air oh, to yeah. Yeah. turn on yourself. <laughs> end up in front of computers for just hours on end and it's harder to right and then you yeah. get stressed too maybe a vocal yeah. isn't doing what you wanted to do or the mix isn't coming together yeah. it's, a good, it's a good way to just break away from business <laughs> even if, and, and i actually recommend this to people that don't aren't even in the industry just people in general human beings like remember to 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 remember your health remember to go outside and kind of just connect with with the earth basically with what's the natural kind of order yeah. of things you know get that sun on your face get that vitamin d mm. and um you know so i'm i'm big on that and i think that's helped me in my career 
getting this far is um i've i've actually had uh, uh one of my buddies uh pass because his, he neglected his health so bad he was a futures engineer a gentleman by the name of seth firkins oh. he's a full sale grad also and he passed he was overweight and i remember uh when he passed it kind of really pushed me even that much deeper into trying to keep my maintain my health because wow. it just was a reminder of uh you know how easy you know we were just hanging out and now you know he passed and stuff and i knew he was not in good health and you know he was smoking and it was it was other stuff so even now even me i try not i i've cut all that stuff down to a minimum you know yeah. because i like i i think i i i've learned to like the feeling of waking up bright and and attacking the day and having yeah. earlier days not waking up too late yeah so all of exactly. that is, is is stuff that people don't talk about as much but it's so important to to what to we did to a full career and not just like a, a, a you know a couple a couple years in and oh yeah i used to yeah i used to ride, run live sound over there or yeah i i, I got a gold record one time yeah you no know, i really making this a living and, and because that's what it is it's a lifestyle and i i even tell young cats now i say because this is something i had to realize is um the day you realize that this is not a job and this is a lifestyle is the beginning of what might be uh a career for you because i mean it doesn't mean you're gonna make it but that's one of the first realizations you have to have is that this is a lifestyle this is gonna be this is gonna consume you every even when you're doing something else i don't care if jingle bells plays i'm listening to the mix i'm like wow you know <laughs> you know just shit like that literally while the, the, this the, during christmas time i'm listening to the old mixes and frank hey. sinatra and I can't help but listen and study and 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 I and I, and I do this weird thing where like I have to like sometimes do a give like a, a precursor to to whoever's riding with me, especially if they ever wrote me. Like sometimes I'll be on a date and I have to explain, hey man, sometimes because I'll do it and I won't know I'm doing it. And I'll say, Hey, sometimes when a song comes on, I kind of like get quiet and I zero in on this thing because it's something just happened that it's got my attention. And so I'm not I'm not there's nothing wrong with me. It's, like, it's a habit of mine that I, I'm always trying to Sorry, learn. Listen. Critical listening. Um, yeah. At any point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's a lifestyle. Um, it sure and, is. You know, because I, I, you know, even when I first started, you know, I would, you know, I remember uh, telling uh, my missus at the time, like, you know, oh, I'll be home at eight. And, you know, there we're, you know, and then it'd be eight to roll around. Oh, we're, 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 we're two more hours, but we're, we're wrapping up. And then all of a sudden, you know, three in the morning, they're they're pissed at me. And then I got to a point where whenever I have a session, I'm not planning anything on that day. Yeah. I can't keep stressing myself out. And again, that's that's when you're bridging that uh what I what I like I told you, the the civilized world and then the matrix where I'm I'm, I'm in the matrix, but I'm telling them, hey, I'll be back out there, you know, to do that with you. They're like, Yeah, yeah. The matrix time doesn't doesn't have there is no time in the matrix there is no time it's there's you know you got you know the, the civilians go by a, a time in the matrix man you you, you know you're, you're no, doing music different. and you look up and it's another day and it's like what the hell just happened you know <laughs> so uh, you know it's so much so much stuff that you learn by trial and error and there's only so much i could say where people won't understand unless they really delve that deep you know and, and, and yeah. you, keep, you keep learning more and more the, the the further you go in, and it's funny because it's so complicated that it gets simple, but then it's so simple that it's complicated. Yeah, yeah. and it's hard <laughs> to explain it, so it, it just is what it is. So, like even sometimes people tell me, "Hey, e, man, you got to get out, man. It's not all about work." And I'm like, "Well," because they think I'm always stressed out. I'm like, "I'm not. I I enjoy what I do." Yeah. To the point, to the point where I do need to go out. I do tell myself, "Hey, man, like this year, I told myself I'm gonna go out more. I'm gonna go and hang out." But I'm so cool with, uh, especially because I have a studio in my home. So, like, yeah. <laughs> up and, you know, I can be in my boxes, eating cereal, mixing a record. And, you know, <laughs> man, if you don't tell me that, if you know, that that was my dream 18, 20 years ago. So I'm doing it. And now you're going to tell me that, hey, man, you need to take it easy. Like, what do you mean? This is, this is taking it easy. I grinded. I went, man, I was really stressed out 10 years ago. Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to go nowhere, man. I like it here. Exactly. You know, when your, your lights are on and all that type of stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. 
boy. You know how what a blessing that is? And I actually I actually give praise for that in itself where I say, man, I remember them days, man. I I know it's another one when I get stressed out. I I, I I coin these little phrases from time to time. And one of them is good problems where uh -huh. uh, I'll be stressed out and I'll be freaking out and I'll be pissed and deadlines and all this shit's going on. And then I like woo style type shit. And I say, these are good problems. Yeah, yeah. Good problem. It's a good problem when Rick Ross wants me to be at his, you know, multi-million dollar mansion and, and he just, he wants me with him all the time. So my multi-million dollar friend wants me to hang out and record music with him that gets played all over the world. That's, exactly. that's, a, that's a good problem. Exactly. And, and he wants the best possible quality. It's no, ah, uh, well, do we have to do this, that, and it? Like, he's like, oh no, what's, is something better? Well then let me know. Tell me and what, what do we need right. to get? You know, right. like not yeah. having that nickel and dime clients too is just like that's a whole nother yeah. aspect to it to just have <laughs> right. somebody down like that so and then on just on a life shit it's uh you know bad problem is them lights like, <laughs> how am i gonna pay how am i gonna pay these lights this month how am i gonna uh you know you know i got an eviction note on my on my my door i'm hiding from the landlord Mm -hmm. Like those are I've I've been through them, so you know those are bad problems. So yeah. all this other shit, like I, I'm not gonna get stressed about this. What? Yes. I'm arguing okay. with Atlantic Records because uh, of a discrepancy on one of my invoices. Like, I mean, it's business, and I'm gonna be on top of them. But I'm not gonna like my life isn't. I'm not. Ah, you know, this is the shit that I. You know, every time I get a check from one of these major labels, and I see the Universal like logo, or I see you know Warner Brothers logo, or you know Atlantic, man, that shit is a dream, and I can't believe it. I save them all just because I look at them sometimes. Say, man, look at that. Look at the Warner Brothers music. I got a check from Warner Brothers music. I've been seeing that logo since I was a kid, man. I remember the first time I walked in the Def Jam, man. Yeah. And my first album I ever bought that I bought with my own money was uh, Beastie Boys. Def Jam. Nah. Yeah. Def Jam records, man. I, the first time I ever walked in Def Jam, man, and it was all business, and I was stressed out. But man, I did. I definitely took a two <laughs> seconds to like, look at that logo and say, "Wow, I'm fucking here at Def Jam Records, man." Yeah. So yeah. you know, those are good problems to be stressed out because Def Jam is tripping like this. Sometimes you got to hear yourself. Yeah, <laughs> man, Def Jam, man. Ugh. And then you're like, "Yo, you're you are arguing, you are you are complaining right now because of." You know, you're interacting with Def Jam. There was a time when you didn't even know how to get in contact with Def Jam. <laughs> so, you know, you take all of that, uh, um, you know, yeah. and you and you understand the blessings of the whole, the, of on the whole, period, yeah. you know? And good so, problems. Good that, that's problems, the problem, man. It's, it's uh, getting, getting to the good problems <laughs> should be yeah. the name of this podcast. Right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Eddie, for, say, for sharing so much of your insight and uh, your journey. Because, whoo, I, 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 are, I know. I, we, we all know that. And it's pretty much the same journeys, funny enough. But, you know, it's all about not giving up. And that's all we, we did. It was just, just right. kept on no matter what. And Lord knows we've been like... Why did he quit? He's a bomb ass engineer. It's been a lot of engineers. I'm like, why aren't you moving to like New York or like go to a bigger city? And Definitely. you know, they just wouldn't push themselves to that next level, even though they were at the level. Yeah. So for us to just keep put going out there and and you know, putting ourselves out there, and you know, for the almost 20 years now, um, I, I, I cheers to you, and I I can't yeah. wait. To do more podcasts with you and um yeah th this is what it's all about man 100 percent, you know and we we all deserve a pat on our back you know yeah. just for, just for that because like a lot of this goes like i, I you know I, i'm I, you know i'm kind of on that tangent now where i'm it's all on a, on that on that aspect of it, it doesn't matter what the industry you're in you know this is a more of a of a personal you know driven thing within all of us that are in this industry you know and and, and we all deserve a a pat on our back for not giving up for having that drive for having that vision you know with 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 support or not support because even I, I i talk about that too with people where even when you have support you still got to do it yourself yeah. you know when you got somebody on the phone and say hey we believe in you you know you're talented this and that when you hang up that phone you're still by yourself <laughs> you still when, you go, when you get in front of that console you're by yourself 
Mm-hmm. Your mom can't do it for you. You, you, whoever, whoever loved you and said, "Baby, you the best," and you so smart. These people honestly kind of want to see you fail. They already, they, you know, they ain't happy with you. They don't know you. I don't know you. My, I usually got my usual guy, and yeah, and, and you're, and you're, and it's all on you. And you gotta, you know, you gotta show out, and, yeah. and you know, and it's so great. it's almost like we got battle scars. You know, like we're all like <laughs> we, we've been, we've been to war. We've been in the trenches. Yeah, so, yeah, we beat up, baby. <laughs> so you know, it's a mutual respect, man. I, I also I use this analogy where it's like we're all in the ocean, you know, and some people, you know, we're all like floating, and it's kind of like you look around every once in a while, wow, you're still here, you know. <laughs> and then and, you'll just be like, they're not there anymore. Yeah, right. They're gone, and it's, it's either they gave up and they stopped, they stopped treading water, or maybe a shark got them, but. Yeah. <laughs> It, whatever the scenario was, they're not there no more. And that, and that, and that, and that, that, that class of people is a small one. Once you start yeah. getting up past ten years, honestly, yeah, yeah. there's not that many people that last that long. Exactly. And so it's exactly. a testament to all of us, man. I, yeah. I don't, I don't big myself up any more than that. Even when I see a young, uh, up and coming uh, engineer, I give him a lot of respect because he's about to you know build his own he's going to tread a path that is not going to be an easy one mm. and um i try and give them as much respect as i'd give any engineer you know obviously they don't know as much but just yeah. to, I, I when I, I i can see when they got it they got the eye for it and they got the passion for it and i got to give them equally as much respect as anybody else just because man you know this is a motherfucker you're about to walk into and you're gonna get beat up you're gonna be this guy. It's like the Rocky movies. You ever seen Rocky? Where Rocky gets his ass kicked for every round, and somehow last minute, he, you know, he gets, the, he gets the eye of the tiger, and yeah, yeah, yeah. and he wins by like beating the guy by one count. He gets up right before the other guy does, and exactly. That's, that's all. One, that's that one that? fucking gig. Yeah, we do yeah. that shit multiple <laughs> times. We get beat up, and somehow we. You know, limp out this motherfucker, and then they tell you, "Hey, good job, kid. We're gonna, you know, we want to beat you up some more tomorrow." Like, uh, all right, uh, yeah, you up for it? Because I mean, there was a time when you didn't even get asked that, so you yeah. always remember those hard times too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, yeah. So, so again, I'll, I'll let, I know you guys keep trying to let me go, so I'm gonna let you let me go now. <laughs> Oh no, all good, Eddie. All good. And I'm so glad that this, again this happened. And so many gems. Thank you so much. Um wow. That, is, this that was, first, is this the first podcast of 2021? Yes. It is. Yes, yes, you right. are. Yeah, I'm, glad is- to, I'm glad to start off the year. Yes, oh, yeah. yes. Thank you so much. And a uh, happy new year to you and uh happy new year. Uh, happy new year. Uh, I wish you guys, uh, wish the the company all the best. (laughs) And uh, thank you to everyone that listened and um, and learning from just, you know, people that's out here right now, not used to doing it right now as we speak. Bangers that we all hear, whether you're in New York, L.A., Miami, uh, all over the world, yes, Europe, everywhere. Um, you out here, and I, I'm so so glad that I was in on this from the beginning. That we saw each other's paths, and that you know, this is what I hoped would happen when I went to full sale. Is you know, getting right. to know people like this and uh, calling them my brothers and sisters, which you, I feel like you are. Like you, you we, we've seen each other in so many aspects of this. So. Um, yeah, so man, you guys, you just got a, a really great show that you'll be able to dissect for any young engineer because I'm definitely gonna uh, reshare this to like haste audio students and stuff like that because Ooh. they really need to hear the other side, not just the tech. That's great, but how to handle people, deal with people, that's a whole nother uh aspect to this. How to so, say no, yeah, how to say no, all the stuff that we just went through, yeah, so, definitely. Uh, yeah, so you know, check us out on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all the good stuff. Tell a friend uh, that you're getting the real shit here on what happens on trying to get into the art of music tech. So from 
uh, E-Mix, uh, Dennis, and myself, Fela. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Hey. For more information of booking 23DB Productions, visit their website at 23dbproductions.com. Like and follow 23DB Productions at Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter for the latest work.